The Bank of Canada just put out a scary warning that the country faces a national productivity emergency. And now the Bank of Canada is expected to cut rates faster and more than the Federal Reserve in the US. But this could lead to shaky ground that causes more problems and more volatility in the Canadian economy, meaning we are far from out of the woods yet. But before we get into it, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want the latest information on Canadian real estate and economics, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. And if you're looking down there and you're going, I thought I was subscribed to Nolan's channel. Well, there is another channel, the bigger channel, which is now dedicated to more global financial information. And this is now the place for the Canadian economic information. So make sure you're subscribed to this one if you're in Canada and both of them if you're generally interested in what's happening in the worldwide economy. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's discuss the Bank of Canada and the need, the new need for more and faster rate cuts than what is happening in the US. I'm gonna jump you straight into the headlines as we always do. And we're gonna talk first about the Bank of Canada likely needing to lead the US with respect to rate cuts. Now, there's been a whole bunch of new data in the US which you can check out on the other channel with respect to interest rates, with respect to GDP, with respect to inflation and revised forecasts, which is now indicating that the Fed in the US may not be able to cut rates at as fast of a rate as they thought they previously could. But in Canada, it is a whole nother story because in contrast to what is going on in the US, where they just revised their GDP numbers up and their unemployment numbers down, meaning the economy is doing very well or at least better than expected, the story in Canada is not quite the same. Specifically, there is weaker GDP growth in the Canadian economy and we're only growing at a pace of about 1%. This is in contrast to the 3.2% in the US, which led the Bank of Canada to come out this week and say that we have a productivity emergency. In other words, our GDP isn't growing as fast as other countries, and that could be problematic. Meaning that in order to keep up with other countries, we may need to cut rates faster and more than what was previously expected. But this is a double-edged sword, because if the Bank of Canada does indeed lower interest rates faster than other G7 nations, well, that will have an effect on our dollar, making it weaker. And a weaker dollar is problematic. Yes, it makes the goods that we export cheaper for other countries, which will potentially lead to higher GDP, but that also means that the goods that we import will go up in price. And when the goods that we import go up in price, well, that would have an inflationary effect. So the Bank of Canada is running a fine line right now, trying to keep our growth as high as it is in other countries, while at the same time managing the problems that moving out of sync with other central banks would potentially cause. Now, Carolyn Rogers, the deputy governor of the Bank of Canada, went so far as to say, you've seen those signs that say, an emergency break glass, well, it's time to break the glass. But here's the thing, lowering interest rates isn't the only way to increase productivity. In fact, there's a lot more that the federal government can do than the Bank of Canada can do in order to increase how competitive our industries are. And a lot of that has to do with removing red tape, lowering taxes for certain industries that are competitive at a global level, and in general, just making it so Canadian companies can compete with those abroad. But if the federal government doesn't take steps in order to make this happen, it again means that the Bank of Canada may need to step in, lower interest rates, which in itself will have an inflationary effect which could lead once again to higher interest rates. WTF, why the phase? So the reality here is that the federal government needs to do more. There needs to be less infighting, less posturing, and a look at the real realities of our economy and what can be done at a federal level to improve it. Now, with respect to the Bank of Canada and when they expect to cut rates, well, there is significant amount of debate around this topic. It's widely expected that the Federal Reserve in the US will be reducing interest rates sometime in June, although it's looking more and more like this could get pushed back. But what that means is that more than likely the Bank of Canada is going to have to move interest rates prior to the Federal Reserve in the US. And as recently as last week, the expectations of the Bank of Canada lowering interest rates in April moved up by as much as 20% which means we could see some relief as early as next month. Either way, this is very much becoming a dangerous time for the Bank of Canada, stuck between not deviating too far from other economies, while at the same time having to take care of the very real problems that are rising at home. 
And those problems are only getting worse and worse. And that is largely due to the fact that the Canadian economy is significantly more sensitive to interest rate changes because of the variable and adjustable rate mortgages, as well as the five-year fixed mortgages, which are basically just five-year adjustable mortgages, and the impact that the changes in interest rates are going to have in the near future, especially as mortgages come up for renewal. And let's be clear here, a large portion of Canadians' income is being used to service debt especially housing debt right now. And this is only second to Australia. So while lowering interest rates will actually decrease the obligations of many homeowners, which will have a relief effect with respect to the amount of income that is going towards housing, again, it also will have an inflationary effect if they lower interest rates significantly more than other central banks. And that is again due to that weakening dollar. So the scary thing here is that rate cuts could help lower the burden for homeowners. But at the same time, they could also have a significant impact on the Canadian dollar and therefore have an inflationary effect in other areas. So this is a very scary time. There are lots of factors here. And while lowering interest rates to increase productivity is seemingly something that needs to happen, it also is something that is going to have an adverse effect on the rest of the economy, which means we could find ourselves in this yo-yo effect where we see interest rates going up and down very quickly. So what does that mean for Canadian consumers? Well, even if interest rates do start to come down, now is not the time to expect that those lower interest rates are going to be here to stay. In fact, as interest rates do come down, it is prudent to take advantage of those lower interest rates, make sure that you are eliminating as much debt as possible, living well below your means, and putting some savings away whenever possible. Because it's becoming more and more clear that we're not out of the woods yet, and this inflation interest rates battle could be a battle that takes years to play out. So make sure that you're preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. Make sure that you have a backstop in place. And if you wanna see more on what's going on in the US and why they may not be lowering interest rates as much as expected, make sure you check out this video right here.